Hi, this is Jason from Activate Ed, and this is the next of our VCE Phys Ed video podcasts. So in this video, we're going to talk specifically uh, about interplay of energy systems uh, during a sprint finish in an endurance type event. So what we're watching here is the 10,000 metres from the Sydney Olympics in 2000. So these guys have been uh, going for over 25 minutes now. Uh, so it's safe to assume that the predominant energy system here is the aerobic system. Oxygen uptake levels will be well and truly sufficient for the aerobic system to be meeting a majority of the energy demands. Uh, so that lap was a 63 second lap, so 63 seconds for 400 metres. And if you looked back through all the previous laps, what you'd see is that the lap time sort of sat between 63 and 65 seconds. So we're just going to let this play for a bit, and then we're going to have a chat about the last lap. So as I come to the finishing post, you'll see another split time. It's about 65 seconds, so the speed's been fairly constant throughout. Once they get onto the last lap here, uh, we're going to see a significant increase in intensity. Uh, and the additional ATP required for that, for that a higher intensity is going to come from anaerobic glycolysis. And that's because the aerobic system is unable to respond immediately to a change in intensity. And that's because op oxygen uptake, heart rate, respiratory rate, tidal volume, stroke volume, all of those things associated with oxygen uptake can't respond immediately. They take time to increase. So you can see they're really sprinting now. Um, the aerobic system here is still predominant, but anaerobic glycolysis is providing the additional ATP required to run at this higher speed. Big sprint finish and a really close finish. So what we can see here is that the last lap was a 56 second lap, considerably faster than the previous laps. And in fact, if you had looked at it even more closely, what you'd see is the last 200 metres was roughly 26 seconds. And that is a seriously quick 200 metres, particularly at the end of 10,000 metres. So it's really important to understand that despite that increase in intensity, the aerobic system is still the predominant supplier of ATP. The anaerobic glycolysis system is providing the additional ATP required to work at that higher intensity, and it needs to do that because the aerobic system is reliant on the delivery of oxygen. And heart rate, respiratory rate, stroke volume, tidal volume, all of those things that, that assist us in delivering more oxygen to working muscles can't respond or can't increase immediately to the level that we require. They increase more gradually. And so in the meantime, uh, anaerobic glycolysis helps us out with the extra ATP. So I hope that's been really useful. Uh, stay tuned uh, for our future podcasts.